about this uh, because I, I'm really curious about your your um, class, your showcases in your class that you guys are all kind of like in the realm of over there. I'm a talent manager, so I I um, I'm just curious. So tell me about it. Yeah, so I just graduated uh, from the actor studio in New York City. So we actually we had a live showcase the Monday right before COVID like shut everything down and we were all like I wonder if this anything will happen with you know the the because I don't think anyone really expected how bad and right. how shut down everything became um so we had on a Monday we had a showcase and then the next day we were off from school and then we got an email saying no class for two weeks and then it was no class for a semester so the school kind of in an effort because we weren't able to do our our plays and have meetings um, because of everything being closed. We did this online one through, uh, I think it was through EcoCasting and Actors Access. And so it's, I, I can send you the link, it was really cool. It's like a big, uh, it's everyone's headshot in the alley, actors headshots, resumes, and they're, oh, they yeah, and then like a little scene, everyone recorded, I did a self tape with a casting director, Wendy Kauf Kaufman, I can't pronounce her last name, but right. we did a, a workshop with her, so she worked with us. Oh. And uh, and then Tash <laughs> emailed us. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. So so um oh Tash, go for it, man. I've been talking nonstop. Right? I mean, <laughs> I <can't care laughs> yeah, no, I saw I said I saw your info along with some of your classmates through Actors Access, and mm -hmm. we're in like the whole shutdown happening and y'all are graduating from college, probably not knowing what to do next. And considering I've been there before, like I said I've been at this for three years, was in the same spot, like starting yeah. school. But I was like a chicken with his head cut off. So I wanted to, you know, lend lend a lend a door for y'all. And that's what led me to talking to you. And here we are now. We're doing it. Yeah, def definitely, definitely. You guys so, have this issue, not to, to jump in here and totally sidetrack, but because you're, I just always wondered this because it drives me nuts when I'm on this Zoom and I'm trying to figure out where the camera's at and look at the camera. And I know you guys do self tapes all the time. So I have to ask this question because I was wondering it the other day. But I'm like, does this, like, how do you perf like master being able to like do these self tapes? I know you're not supposed to look right at the lens, you know, but <laughs> you always nail it. And I'm like, where's this <laughs> all over the place? <laughs> I never look at the thing. Everyone cracks on me. Why are you looking at the ground? I'm like, no, I'm looking at the thing. <laughs> so what's your methods? <laughs> I think you get, I, I really struggled with it because we had class on Skype or on Zoom. And so I was going from acting classes, you know, in a little black box, and so it was just, it was an adjustment. And I was like, I hate this. I don't know where to look. I don't know how to act. But then as the more I did it, it kind of felt easier. Um, and I, I don't know, I try to follow the look just to the right or just to the left of the camera. But mm -hmm. then the problem with Zoom, I feel like is that I'm just watching myself sometimes. So I, um, I've had like some auditions on Zoom and some meetings and I have to turn, but you can turn off your camera so you can't see yourself but the other person can so that's oh, helped idea. because it's like it's kind of distracting if I'm trying to audition and I just see a giant picture of myself right. <laughs> so I think it gets easier but it's definitely a new kind of platform yeah I, as for me considering I take classes via zoom what I'll end up doing because since my video gets spotlighted I will find my reader on the gallery view and I'll just mm. look, at, look at them the whole time yeah. 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 Tasha's like, mastered the whole like he's been able to keep his eyes like straight on. I'm like, I can't for the white I can never <laughs> like I always get cracked on by everyone. What are you looking at? I'm like, the screen with the, <laughs> the Just say you're really deep in thought and you need a second. Yeah. That's all you gotta say. <laughs> yeah, that works. Right. That works too. <laughs> Sorry for my side note, it's like curious manager questions, I guess, or something. I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell us about yourself who are you where you grew up how did you get into acting Did you think you were going to be an actor or? um so I grew up in Connecticut 
I went to England a bunch in the summer because my mom's English. So I grew up really culturally confused. Um, when I was little, some words would have a British accent and some wouldn't. So that was kind of my early childhood was being American, but also being English. And um, I didn't really start acting until high school because I actually went to a military high school because I thought I was going to go in the Navy. Um, so I did that for four years. And then senior year, I just decided to audition for a play. And then I went to school for acting in Connecticut and Scotland and London, and then moved to New York. So how you came back to here, if you were over there. I, I'm questioning that. <laughs> I know London is so beautiful uh, in Scotland. That's a lot of those guys in, in skirts that kind of like threw it off for you, huh? Oh. A little bit. <laughs> I didn't know that they really did that, but they really, men really like just wear kilts and it, yeah, because here it's a joke, but over there it's like, like wear out. It's a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will never forget, like, I was working retail, and, and I see this dude come in. He had an orange beard, and up top, he had on a suit. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, this dude is spiffy. And then he took a lot more steps, and I just see that skirt, and I lost it. <laughs> no, it's a shock. <laughs> but, uh -huh. yeah. That's really... Awesome. Kind of a strange path to get here. And then whenever I tell people I went to military high school, they're like, Lucy, you did? And I'm like, oh, yeah, full cadet. So. I, um, I was in Virginia, and I went to boarding school. And my parents mm. wanted me to go to Blue Ridge Military School. So we Whoa. went. Have you ever hear, heard of it? Yeah. A tough school. For an interview. I was like, I am not going to military school. So this interview is going to suck. And I'm going to get <laughs> down for this one, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Went there. I was like so rude and not proper to them. And ah, my parents wanted to beat me down after that. <laughs> I was like, you I'm not going to school. I am not going to military school. <laughs> so Tasha's like, I don't know what. You guys are talking about. Yeah. And I, I can relate. Like I know my mother did basic training in the army. I got a buddy in the army, but yeah, I mm -hmm. that military life. But I could like all the veterans. I commend y'all. Thank y'all for your service. I could never do that. Mm -mm. That's been a movie it's commitment. Right. Yeah, my little brother ended up going in the navy. He went to the same program and he loved it. So he's um, he's deployed right now, but he's on his way back. So it's good. But it's just crazy kind of how you start doing one thing when you're younger and then whew, into something else. <laughs> and one thing. That's, that's cool. So Tosh, what do you got for, you, you had your little IG live, so. All right, so, so what I got for, what I like to talk about more, which you'll see is definitely your views with entrepreneurship and acting and how how the two things they're actually symbiotes mm. so when i little old me 16 years old with braces and did a play in high school i thought acting you just learn your lines create a character and that's it and then you go act and then you make lots of money and then you get you know your emmys but um i kind of found out as i started studying it more that and something I wish more programs did is they have the business. I think actors should have business classes. I think actors should have entrepreneurship classes. I think they should have marketing classes um, and brand, how to create a brand, because those are things I found out when I moved here three years ago and I've been cultivating since, but I worked for a nonprofit. And so if I hadn't worked for their, them, I wouldn't have really gotten the understanding of how to run social media pages, how to engage with consumers of your product which is me it's my art it's my talent so I think actors you know you need to think of yourself as a, a business and when we go speak to agents and representatives and managers it's it's a transaction it's this is my brand I'd like to help you and you can help me um which is is a new perspective I'm trying to take because I think it's really easy to go into showcases with the mindset of please pick me and what do you need and being very eager and I'm definitely a, a people pleasing person I like to do good work do a good job but I recently was like well but I'm also worth something 
So it's just that mindset, I think, that business, business owners and entrepreneurs and people who start their own companies have of, I have something that's worth you being interested in. Um, and so I think if I ever started in my own school, wrote my own book, I would really love to have a part of a program that's about the business and about being your own boss. Um, I think it'd be really valuable. Right. Yeah, that is a good, good tip. I think definitely, especially with the social media these days and just mm -hmm. everything, they always on the breakdowns ask, what's your social media? What, you know, what are you tied in with? Not just all your reels and your clips and everything else. They want to know what's your extended arm of networking because then they can tap into that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Are hired. If you have no extended arm of networking like our platform, then you you know you you just you know it's kind of like a step down. So yeah. it's like having no photos and no reel if you don't have any kind of extended arm of networking in this day and age. You know mm -hmm. that goes yeah, and business like you're talking about and and being able to run and and operate a business even if it's a nonprofit or a small business right and then just doing social media is like a business on its own mm -hmm. yeah. and so. i know so many um talented act like talented actors directors playwrights who just are like well i'm not us i'm not on social media i'm not on instagram and one of my very good friends from school is one of the most talented people i know and she doesn't have an instagram and i'm like you are doing yourself such a disservice mm -hmm. and i you know and i think I think it's very cool to say, well, I don't use social media. I'm not, a, I'm off the grid, but the reality is, is the world we're living in relies on social media. You know, you meet someone, the first thing you do is look them up and people want to see your content and who you are. Um, and I, I think that that can be viewed super negatively, but at the same time, it's, if you want to get noticed, put out content and have control over your own content, post what you want to post and um, have a presence. I think it's, it, it's worth it. Yeah, exactly. Def definitely, definitely. Like, definitely with creating content, like, especially now where everything is being moved to the internet. Mm -hmm. So if you are technically challenged, you might want to get on that because once this whole shutdown is officially lifted, it's going to be like the Stampede and the Lion King. Remember when Simo was yeah. running? Yeah, that, that's what's going to be like with all the content that's going to be coming through. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to be Mufasa in that situation though, please. <laughs> My yeah. God, it's like, mm -mm. Yeah, so in a sense, Mufasa, that's the ones who are technically challenged. <laughs> there you go. I think that's a great analogy. Now everyone's going to watch this and be like, okay, I got to figure it out. And it's also so, it's, I don't know, it's, I don't find Instagram that tedious. I find it addictive sometimes, but we'll see. So I just encourage people to uh, kind of take control of what, what is out there about them because if you have your own instagram or facebook or twitter or i don't know there's so many um you can control what's on there and really show what you want to show so i think it's interesting yeah instagram is, is awesome but it can be aggravating because you want to do so much more with it but you can't but that's like what everybody's platform go to is right now yeah it's the i think it's the top one yeah yeah but um and which is your number one that you use most, Instagram? I would say Instagram in terms of what I post the most on. Um, I have Facebook, but I went through, so my, my personal page is just people I talk to every day or family. Mm -hmm. And then I have my, my Instagram is set up like a business account. So then it goes to my Lucy Lewis Facebook page for my four fans. So I I try to keep content on there, but uh, definitely Instagram, yeah, Twitter. Fans, we got change. I got four fans. Everybody out here watching, you got to follow her. What's your Instagram? I think it's just Lucy Lewis. Yeah, yeah. underscore Lucy Lewis underscore underscore. Thank you, Tash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got you. got a got lot you. of my face. Got a lot of my face, so you should be able to know. Did you start your business before acting? or come up with the idea or it just kind of took off while you were acting or what's the deal with that? Um, I think it kind of, I learned from people who are a little older than me or people who I knew who were successful. I would look at what they were posting and I was just, I, it made me realize 
that people are looking at my social media accounts. So I think if you have a public page and you're an actor and I'm applying to things on Backstage and Actors Access, it's mm -hmm. only right for me to assume that those directors are just looking up really quick on Instagram and scrolling. And I've had people ask to include links. So I think honestly, Instagram for me has kind of become an extension of my resume in right. a weird kind of way because it shows, it's, I mean, sometimes I'm posting things I think are funny. Sometimes it's me and my family. Like I, it really is a representation of myself. So if you're not just getting a complete who I am from my one headshot, right. um, you know, which was done in a studio, you can go to an Instagram page and see what I look like when I don't have two lights and editing. So I, I appreciate it in that way. Um, and in terms of a business, I think every actor is their own business. I don't right. think you create it. I think once you, once you go to one audition, it's you. Right. What would you do to separate yourself from just an actor business? To, you know, uh, uh, let's see. Every actor should have a business. Yes, they should mm -hmm. all have a platform and a business. Correct. But what would you do to make yourself a little bit different than just an actor business platform? Does that make sense? Yeah, than just having content that's related to acting. Yeah, because you know, everybody yeah. always posts it like this, I'm at the store, look at me at the egg section, here we are over here, you know, like that type of thing, right? It's like, yeah. <laughs> you get this all the time, but what would it be like if it, like Lucy was to create kind of a, a structured platform as an actress, but something that you do um, a little bit outside of the box and that's interest to you, but it plays into the acting. Have you done that or have you figured, figured I, out? I have been thinking about that because my page right now is pretty personal. Um, there's nothing on there that I'm ashamed of people seeing, but I was like, I had a, I had, um, uh, I can't, it was a question I was asked, like, you know, tell me, tell me things that are weird about yourself. And anytime someone says that, you know, your brain goes blank and you're like, I, I watch Netflix, but that's, you know, everyone does that. So mm -hmm. I would post, I would create a page and content that has my trained acting um, build up in revenue and says I'm in this play or I'm doing this short and has promotion for that. But then also I would have clips of me playing video games because that's something I do do when I'm not acting. Um, but that's a part of my personality, right? And then if an agent sees that, they're like, okay, so she's kind of like this. And then I'm also, I got a degree in political science. So I would post some more, you know, nonprofit um, things I think are important and people should know about. So I, I think making yourself human on social media is a big thing because no one wants to work with a robot. And I think if I, I personally have friends who just post or not friends, but you know, people in the business I've seen and every pay, post on their page is, hello, I was honored to be put in this movie. It is my great honor to announce I have been cast. And it's just like, dude, you're a robot. Like, who are you? So I think keeping a sense of humanity on a robotic platform is what you need. And I, you know, just need to let people know that specifically boys that I play the same games as them, I can probably beat them. No, um, what, what's this right. PS, PS phone? All of it, all of it. What do you think I've been doing in quarantine? <laughs> nice. All right, all right, so, okay, so you're a video game head, right? So mm -hmm. I got on my back wall, I got three video John games. John Wick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's only five, man. Really he zoned in on that. She already knew this before you knew it. All right. Oh, so, Grand Theft Auto Five. Okay, that's you got that. one. I can't see that. Is that dark? No, that's Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Oh, uh, I don't know which one that is. It's not. Oh, it's a DLC. Yeah, it's, it's not for um Origins, is it or Legion? No, it's no. not. Doom. That's so fun. Okay. I just okay. Got that. All, right, all right, you got this and now. It's now this one. This one. This one right here. The blue joint. Blue. I can't see it. I don't know that one. Okay, think. no, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that? Uh, so, like, like, <laughs> I tried, I tried. I was like, I got really nervous. I was like, oh no. I was curious. I, I, yeah, yeah, I see, she she yeah, 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 you got it. We, yeah. So, what is your uh, game of choice? Oh, I hate this question. Don't say Minecraft. I, don't say Minecraft. <laughs> oh God, no! Minecraft makes me angry. I don't get it. I'm like, what are you? You're just, I don't get it. I would say either Witcher Three, 
Red Dead 2. Witcher's pretty crazy. Witcher's pretty insane, and I got way too into the story because I'm an actress. That's my point, is I play the game. Like, I play RPGs a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Three. Mafia series. The Mafia series. Very good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she bad. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Do you, do you, do you like Mass Effects? <laughs> yeah. 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 I played those. I played through all those um, in college. Okay. Shepard. Yeah. Get him. Game hit, all right. <laughs> They they need um, there hasn't been too much well, for obvious reasons lately but but um, I feel like things dropped off a little bit but I think that it's gonna pop off in the gaming world very soon in some other yeah. kind of like realm of things you know like a whole another new level. I do too. I think I think like how immersive games are now it's mm -hmm. just gonna keep and in terms of like. Like, if you look at games from, like, five years ago, there's a definite end. Or even ten years ago. Like, the game ends, credits roll. But now we see, like, the world keeps going. And there's more. And, like, Skyrim, that's a joke. It never ends. Like, no one's ever really beaten it. Yeah. Because some people keep running up to you, telling you to go kill something. So, I think you're right. I think I think it all is just going to be more online. And I have I a think. feeling, and I could be wrong, but because everything's online right now and we have the whole social distance and all that stuff going on and people are trying to figure out how they can be together and and engage more together i think that this multimedia or the multi uh uh what do they call it you know like the uh, RPG, yeah. uh cool. the open world stuff but usually it's only limited to like 20 people on there i think mm. somebody's going to come up with something massive multi-world that's yeah, cool. like everyone can be playing it. Yeah, yeah. And soon. I agree. There probably yeah. are some platforms, but there's limitations. But I just have this feeling something soon, due to everything we're going through, is going to come out. And it's going to be so immersive, not just on like the fighting and that stuff, but possibly something on a grander scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I think so. Oh, what needs to happen think, yeah. since 2020, yeah. what needs to happen is someone like figure out a way to have Xbox and PlayStation gamers play together or <laughs> there you go. That needs to happen. It does. I'm tired think, of it. I think the first game is gonna be related around John Wick. I don't know. I just have this thought. <laughs> I'm just joking. Just I kinda John see Wick. it behind yeah. me. Yeah. John Wick, GTA, <laughs> Spider Man. Yeah. GTA messed with my driving for a while. I was like, Lucy, <laughs> stop whipping around cars. <laughs> oh my god. That's true. If you like download the radio from what they play in the game, I was like, hmm, I don't know um, who I think I am. But I think, you know, our agents and casting directors going to now have potential clients like myself play them, you know, play well, them in a game, see what the skill level is, <laughs> and then sign them. They ask for gamers all the time, but not everybody's a gamer and they never disclose their gaming. And they're not all that, oh. they just know, they ha know how to hold the controller, but they're not as good as a gamer, like what it really like specifies. So to actually mm. like be able to talk about gaming and, and go into depth, you can do all that. So you should actually have that on your resume. 100%. You just clicked, yes, I should, you're right. I'm and gonna do that after this. The gaming channel or show, or talk to Tosh if you want to do a channel or talk to me or whoever. Um, and we can talk further past this show. But you could do something host-wise or something along those lines in depth with gaming. And this is awesome because not too many girls come forward with the whole like I'm a gamer thing. I and know. It's, it's like, like you, you know? Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm building a PC. Let's go. You got a you got a niche. And you've got a, you got a skill set right there that not a lot of people put on there because they just think, ah, oh, I can put that. But I'm I, going to. Yeah, thank you for the advice. I can't even so tell anyone watching. Breakdowns, I see. I need a gamer. It's like, oh, nobody ever puts that on there. I got like three people I know of off the top of my head and that's it. You know, so it's like, there you go. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, and I'm good at it. <laughs> you got off of stay up networks and we're not even halfway done with this thing. <laughs> so. And on top of that too. That's my skill. <laughs> yeah, I say in the fact that you're a gamer and in, in that world, like gamer girls, that's that's an untapped market. 
and plus plus you are an yeah. attractive woman so people are gonna be like oh pretty woman playing video games what she actually beating people yeah subscribe <laughs> yeah let's make a deal okay um no i think it's that's so true because i started playing games because my little brother did so he got an Xbox and we would play Halo together. And that was like the way we got super close. And, um, and ever since then, like, cause I'm an actress, we, we you know, like in my imagination is crazy. I love storytelling. So I love games because they're just, they're like, they're yeah. fun. There's something to zone out into. It's hard for me if I've had a really hard day at school or at work, it's hard for me to come home and relax by just watching TV because I'm still like amp. So I like gaming for that reason. I like the community. I like that when I say I play games, every guy in the room goes, what? And I'm like, yeah. But, um, and I think, more, I, think, I think it's a market that more girls play games than you think. And I would love to create something that all the ladies can come out and so. Exactly, you could host, we can totally, now I'm gonna go totally side off of this and then we'll go back to you. But just real quick, you could do it because I just got this like creative, thought so I have to vent it you sure. could create a channel where you basically host the gaming channel right now you're already like marketing yourself as a host and, and having other skill sets and you're a gamer but then you get other gaming girls on that channel right mm -hmm. I don't want to get the full thing out here because I don't want somebody to be like oh I'm doing that tomorrow even though I can't no. and so and then there you go we there can, you go we do this I think we should do this Wow, what a <laughs> <laughs> what time to talk about acting. Now I was saying to be continued. So actually yeah. one last thing so one last thing and then we're gonna go off the, the video game topic. So now Lucy, considering you, we're both in New York, tell me that New York does not feel and look like real life GTA. Yo, you can't I said that yesterday. <laughs> Off the I was like, and go back into the subject again. <laughs> you're so right. I was driving yesterday and I I drove to Connecticut for a day just to visit my parents. I was coming back and like just there was like smoke and there was like someone trying to get something out of my car and it just it, but it like seems somehow cleaner like a video game right now. You know what I mean? And there was like it was just I was driving and I was like whipping around people. I was like oh my god this is i'm in gth i gotta go get trevor or something like this is hilarious i was like i don't know what's happening i didn't think anyone had a car over there in in, in uh in new york it was like you have to hop around between things you gotta poop. yeah yeah that's like going to thailand and trying to get out <laughs> And I experienced that every day. I'm like, yo, I know people think this. Like, yo, this looks like GTA, bro. <laughs> it does. It does. Especially with everyone wearing masks. I'm like, oh, no. What's it's happening? Like, like GTA Online. <laughs> you guys are all back out, though, walking around and doing stuff now, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Some, that for, for a while now. Yeah, we're in phase one of reopening. So, mm -hmm. like, restaurants and small – I think restaurants can do – my curbs have been open. Curbside's been more relaxed, and I believe like small businesses are able to open back up, but right. not um, no like seating in restaurants or maybe closed stores are still closed. I'm not quite sure of the limits, but people are out. Um, I live in Carroll Gardens. People are walking around. Kids are on scooters. So, oh, okay, that's yeah. cool. Um, so so it, it basically feels like okay, cool. This might be good. <laughs> Like we could be yeah. possibly past this now. I hope so, and I hope it stays that way. Possibly. I I don't know. I'm I'm kind of liking the whole like less people out. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I don't I don't go anywhere, so. <laughs> uh, used to it, like, because of quarantine, I've been able to just dance in the middle of the street on the daily. Yeah, we've seen. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, dan like Tosh is dancing. Um, things randomly i know but you, you know what you go man you keep posting those i'll start doing more gaming videos we're all set there you go <laughs> hilarious so, so what's your um your all right go for it tosh roll with your question oh, actually, i feel i feel you're about to go but you're about to go on to something go ahead bro oh something good <laughs> yeah no i was gonna ask like as an actress, what's your um, your go-to? Like, are you a drama? Are you comedy? What what would you be your ideal role or uh, show, movie, whatever to be on? So, 
I really struggled with that question for a long time because I was like, well, I get cast as this, but then I'm told on this. And then it kind of clicked that the roles I love and the women I'm going to play are women like um, Dolores in Westworld, um, June in Handmaid's Tale, like the Elizabeth Moss kind of parts where it's like a sweet, cute lady who then goes warped and kind of fights the system. Um, is all the parts I can see myself getting. And then I've had people say, you know, like, people will say, what shows do you think you could walk onto? And I think I could walk onto Westworld, uh, Handmaid's Tale, but then also do more period stuff like The Crown. So I want to play like, you know, those parts of strong ladies who overthrow something. But uh, I like comedy too. So that's kind of the thing is, um, I really, I like comedy. (laughs) My thesis was in comedy. Uh, Comedy's hard, but it's really fun to, be on a set like that and improv and yeah yeah so we'll, we'll see let's, let's go with this what's what's the dream you, you act in world what, what's, what's the dream what do you want to achieve let's say in 2030 but in your by year 2030 yeah yeah i i want to be breaking the film and tv and tell women's stories that haven't been told before. I wanna keep doing this trend I'm seeing of having really strong women leads. Um, But then I also, my hope is because I have a political science degree, I want to create and facilitate and produce more like political theater and um, you know, things like that, that people can come see and kind of inspire a change or spark a question of well, why is it things like this? And um, because I think art is so political and obviously, you know, movies and TVs can be very politically on political on purpose, but I'm, I'm interested in creating things that are a little more subliminal um, that you kind of don't realize till the end, the message. So I would love to, you know, start acting in TV and film tomorrow and then be able to create my own work as a producer. Um, My dad always says, be like Reese Witherspoon, but I don't think he knows that that's like not quite as easy because she, you know, she started her own company and she produced Break Little Lies. Uh, And so I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll channel Reese dad, don't worry. Um, So I'd love to, I'd love to work as an actor and use that voice and platform to create change or just even get people thinking outside of the way they were raised a little bit and just pose some important questions. Yeah. So big missions, and I want to play video games. So we got a lot to do, guys. <laughs> well, P- PS Five is coming out soon. You are right. Oh, it is. See, I'm like, I, yeah. I didn't keep up on it. Yeah, bro. New decade. Just like, like say, yo, it's a new decade, 2020. Like, like everything, everything is changing now. PS Five, and <laughs> I'm not really gonna call that the new Xbox, Xbox Seven Twenty, Xbox Two. Yeah. I heard one. Of them, I think it was the the most re not the one. One of them was a big flop. Nobody really liked it. I forget which one. I think it's the I think it was the Xbox. I think it was the Xbox One when it came out. Maybe three sixty was solid. The newest one it has a lot of glitches. I think one one was glitchy because you had to like rebuy. I know you had to rebuy all your games. I no. Yeah. So all right. So now going back to the actress thing. I had a good question. What was it? All right, Tasha, if you got a question, go for it. I'm gonna. I have to think about this one. I had some. All right. Okay. All right. So while while you think, yeah, definitely by the fact that you have a political degree, that is amazing. Because I said during these times you're we in right now, we need people to step up. Not only people in general, but also people in your position and this this probably won't sound crazy but i'm this is me i'm a blunt dude you are the shiny you are the shining white knights of america i think i'm just sweaty (laughs) (laughs) i don't think i'm shiny (laughs) no 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 no, you are shining white armor in america and you say something people will gravitate towards you and listen there you go. Wow, that was so kind of you. I, I mean, I hope so. Um, yeah, I hope so. I hope, I hope to, I hope to create communities where you don't need a white uh, knight to spark change. So that's another mission, and just keep educating myself and learning. But 
think that was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's cool about the political thing too. That's good. It's like you understand the whole background of all that stuff as well, a little bit further right. than most people do. So um, I know my question now. Uh -oh. so, <laughs> it probably leads into other stuff. So being in New York and you guys get a lot of like um, uh, shows and stuff going on in New York, but not so much commercial stuff that happens. What is, uh, did you recently graduate? Or are you, are you still in there? Okay. So you did. So what's your target area that you want to be in based out of? In, ter in terms of like, I want to do film, I want to do film and TV. Right. Um, you want to be based all the time out of New York? Do you want to be branched out into different areas and based out of New York? Do you want to end up in a different area and based out of there and then be able to go to New York as different areas that you can work in? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I I would be I would love to be bi coastal. Um, because you know, there's obviously there's so many benefits in New York and then there's so much work and potential in LA. So I think it's it's a disservice to just stay and just look in the city. Um, I'd love to be by coastal. My ultimate ultimate acting dream is to be in a play at the National Theater at London. Cool. So yeah. I missed that there you go. So good. try co try coastal maybe. I don't know. There but you go. get on yeah, spot. Get on spot. Yeah. There's a do you know spotlight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get on there. That's all the Europe stuff. You should get on I there. I know. So, yeah. and because I'm a UK citizen too, so I'm like, oh, yeah. I'll do New York, and I'll have you know, because I'll be, I'll have the funds. I'll have a you know my New York apartment, my LA home, my London apartment open. You know, so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, so you can go over there as well. So, do you have people still over there that you can go to um, Europe? Yep, my um, my mom's family's still all. all off all over there and then my dad my dad's irish so he has hundreds of family members in ireland oh, in nice. like deep deep rural ireland so i'm yeah. really lucky iron's awesome dublin donny gold donny gold yeah my uh my family's in uh mayo in Maherdane. oh okay damn so you got so you got gamer host soon to be <laughs> <laughs> like the the so are you singer dancer Oh, so Try. now you got like triple, quadruple threat, something like that. You can go be bi-coastal, work in all these different areas, and you can go into Europe and work. No problem. Damn, you got a lot going on here. I'm trying. <laughs> wow, that was so nice. So, nice. <laughs> so who's, did you, so you did that showcase to land an agent and manager and all that, right? Because you don't have any at the current time until nope. after they watch this video. And then it gets distributed everywhere and they see like how much stuff you have, right? We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You read in my mind, long-term plan. Um, who's, you know. who's your targets? Your in, target, in terms, um, as far as like, who are you going to target agent wise and where? Um, that question, I never really know how to answer because I, I kind of am like, I have looked at major agencies in New York and LA and I would just like to see, you know, it's like, it's, it's, well, I think, oh, well, I aligned with them and with them and Smith Town Group and UGA and then, then, oh my gosh, and AAG. So it's kind of to see, I want to see who, who watches it and is like, oh yeah, we need one of those. And then I would do, you know, more research, but I have done um, research into New York and LA and Bicoastal and met some people and I'm really lucky for that. So. Right. <laughs> so would you be like every everybody that's an actor always wants to go to UTA, CAA, like Abrams, all the top dogs, or do you want to start in a better boutique agency that really wants you on board that you really can like work with and bond and you can both grow and make something yes. big happen? Or would you yeah. want to be one of these people that wants to go for the top, for go for the gold, skip all the rest, don't build anything up, and try to see if you can land in a big agency that has way too many people and that you basically have no credits to show for on that agency? Which would you, your choice be? I, I mean, I would rather honestly work with a person I trust who has no clients and build a relationship and build a, a 
a network. Um, because like you said, I, I'm very wary of signing with the first person who asks me to with it. And if, if it was a big agency, because I would not, I would, I would go with my gut and I would trust, I would want to create a real relationship of trust because I don't want to just get lost. Um, and like I said, it is a business. So I think as hard as, as it is because I'm watching, you know, friends get signed and I'm still kind of waiting just because of everything that's happened with COVID. I'm wary of signing with the first person who notices me because it's a business. So is it, it might be the best for them, but is it the best for me? Right. Um, so I'd much rather go with someone smaller, whatever that means, because once they have me, it won't be small. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, like why not? And then create something that benefits us both. I think that that's really important. I think names are wonderful and those agencies are wonderful and they have amazing clients. And one day maybe I would love to sign with them, but I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't dis dismiss a smaller agency just for being small. There you go. There's my awesome. speech. Thank that's you. A good, that's a good you. way of thinking about it. That's actually the only way to think about it. Mm -hmm. oh. I think the path is uh, slow and steady and working hard rather than straight to the top. Right. Unless you're Chris Pratt. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a whole different story. <laughs> Unless you're Chris Pratt. Nah, that's funny. It's funny as hell. But, um, yeah, I've, I would definitely, like, talk, talking to someone that has both an agent and a manager, you definitely want to treat it like you're, like you're in a draft. Like, well, like an NBA, NFL draft. Like, find out who's the best match for you. Mm -hmm see who the ones who are going to vow for you because because once you sign that contract yeah that's it. like yeah y'all like this y'all stuck with them so mm -hmm. best make damn sure it's the person you want to be with yeah and i think something that i love about myself but is also a downfall of mine is whenever i'm working i'm working at a company or i'm working on something i work very hard to very hard to guarantee success for both parties and mm -hmm. so if i signed with a company a manager or an agent and then I just felt like it wasn't working. I would be, I would feel awful because I feel like I would just be like, well, I'm wasting their time. They're wasting my time. Like this isn't worth it. So that, uh, I like that quality about myself that I, no matter what project I'm on, it could be a one person show on the streets of New York. I work really hard at it. And so I wouldn't want to sign with someone that I'm not able to commit to and that they're not able to commit to me. So I think you're right, Josh. And there you go. So do you do any like, um, you know, theater and stuff just to keep yourself rolling besides just classes? Yeah. So I just, I just graduated last month. Um, but I have, I've done like a lot of theater. I've done Shakespeare. I've done classic stuff like a dollhouse. Um, I love theater. I think it's, you know, an industry that's really suffering, unfortunately, right now, because if you stream a, a performance, it's not theater, then it's film. So there's something so it's magic to me. It's magic to be sitting in a theater space and you're watching performers do a story that they've done a hundred times, but it feels brand new. Right. Um, and there's something about that connection as, and that connection is why I think theater has survived since, since people could, could speak in any sort of way, you know, it started right. with dance. It started with songs and songs like humming drumming and then it became stories and then it became legends and then it became a way to explain what rain was and then it became written and now we have people are still doing aristotle's works and i think that there's something so beautiful in that so i love theater but yeah i i could talk about theater forever <laughs> that's cool well theater forever okay mm -hmm. so let's, let's talk about theater right now so what is the best play that you've seen in theater okay i can i do can i do two sure wow. okay because that's so hard because i feel like that's so tricky because every show i see is so different um some of the the best oh gosh i saw lazarus which was the musical david bowie wrote right before he died and it was at the the uh, new york theater workshop and it was the strangest thing I've ever seen, but the most, one of the most impactful pieces of theater. It was about, you know, David Bowie's whole Man from Mars story. So it was a man from Mars who was stuck in New York City and couldn't get home. And it was so beautiful. 
and so powerful and just I've left it was one of those things where you leave the theater and you're like I'm different now somehow I'm different and so I I that always comes to mind when I first when someone asks me that and then the second I would have to say is I saw oh not Carrie oh what's her name Carrie Mulligan I, I think Carrie Mulligan I saw Carrie Mulligan in a play of Girls and Boys by uh, Dennis Kelly I believe and um it was a one woman show I saw about I think two years ago in New York City and that came from London and it um it was just this woman talking to the audience about how she fell in love with her husband and then the back curtain rose up and there was a whole apartment and she's talking to her kids but her kids aren't there and it takes a really dark turn and it was just such it was like just the most master class of acting of just the, how this one woman for two hours or something just captivated everyone it was beautiful so i'm so lucky to have seen those wow two hours of what one woman she yeah that's what just her talking for two hours and then talking and listening to her she was like uh, you know sense creating these children that she was talking to saying no you can't have that and but you fully believe there were like little kids on stage with her i'm just making sure i got her name right because that would be awful um and she's being recorded so yeah my, i know yeah, right. <laughs> uh, make sure you give tosh all your um or you send it to stay up networks all of your links for your acting sites and stuff and we can put it in the description for you also in case anybody watches this and they're like oh she's she's interesting i could use her or something like that i oh, will wow. extra added props something to you. yeah props <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah just thought randomly thought about that let's see what else can we quiz her on tosh hmm. okay um <laughs> i guess What is, well, I probably know the answer to this, but what is, what is your preferred venue to see theater in London? The National Theater. <laughs> and that's what, that's what I was thinking about, y'all probably know, I probably know the answer because this was, this was my also, this was, this was my go-to spots, whether I was seeing theater or just being right by the Around world. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I was that's there. magical. Oh. Although, but there's so many beautiful theaters in London. I feel like it's so unfair of me to say that because that's the big, I think, I believe that's the biggest one. But like the Globe, also amazing. I got to see Titus Andronicus there. And that's a really bloody, bloody Shakespeare play. And I was standing and there was blood going on the audience and feathers. It was so much fun. Yeah, damn. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I am stressed. I'm, this is the most stressed I've ever been in the show. Because the people would like come through the audience and be like, Mo for the king. And I was like, I'm just, um, I'm in this yeah. now. Okay. Should That's put it on my resume, really. You know, the yeah. ensemble. <laughs> yeah, yeah have, blood, have blood on your face at a show. Yeah, I'd be like. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, oh, what else do you got to say? So during this crazy time, what would you, as an actress, besides an actress gamer during this time, what would you put <laughs> out there as, like, just helpful, like, going forward and staying up, like moving up, um, tips to people, like fellow peers and people watching this? I think the most valuable thing is you don't have to be working every second of every day. Mm -hmm. And you don't, and I, I find this is something I'm saying because I struggle with it, is you're not in a competition with the people around you because I think act, actors are so individual. And so if I have a friend who gets signed first, we were not in competition together. She's completely different, you know, for example. So I think staying motivated in work for yourself, not to please other people, not to create things that you think other people want, just do what you want to be doing. And also I think the value of rest in our kind of hustle culture we've created gets, it's so, it's so underrated. And burnout is very real. Um, I've been feeling it. I'm sure you've both had days where you're just like, I cannot do anything today. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes you just got to listen to that moment and say, I'm not, and it's hard because I think our generation is like, if you're not online working all the time because you're home because of COVID, then you're lazy. But it's like, you're not lazy. You're being smart and resourceful and say, today I need to veg out. Today I need to eat Domino's and that's okay. 
tomorrow, I will go back on backstage. Um, so I, I would really just encourage anyone who watches this, just listen to those moments when you need rest, because it, you're going to burn out either way. And um, you can't, you can't do be the best at your job, which is acting and creating characters and using your imagination if you're tired and if you're not healthy. And so I just encourage rest and I encourage um, to lessen the voices of comparison that we all seem to generate mm -hmm. because I had a teacher say, and it's a quote from someone else, but, and it stuck with me, but she says, uh, comparison is a thief of joy. And I try to keep that in the back of my head. That's you pretty, know, just wow. Keep working. That is that's pretty solid, especially right now during this time that everybody's got a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Different. And I th yeah, and I think it's also because everyone's home. We're just seeing everyone frantically posting on Instagram and Twitter, saying, "Just had a meeting, just did this audition," and it's 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 I've ha I've done that, and mm -hmm. I'm like, "Well, this is just me trying to prove to people that I'm still working," and it's like, "Well, what does that mean?" Like, no, I can, I don't have to prove anything to anyone. I know what I'm doing. So I, think, I would just be wary of hustle culture and take yeah. a breath. I think that goes for everything going on right now in the world um, that everybody can say everything they want, but really where it boils down to is action, you know, mm -hmm. and like actually owning it and doing it rather than just saying it, you know, so saying mm -hmm. it and tweeting it and all that goes as far as like literally an hour of you doing that. But mm -hmm. as far as like actually taking charge or um oh, what's the word i'm thinking like changing what what you know like making a change and doing things would be an action step to me and, and that would be more it would be uh more valuable um if it was an action and it, and and you could see it without having to post it you know yeah. and then when you're posting it and people see this change in this person and what they're doing for other people and how they're leading other people into this change, especially these days, and and for the best, they can see that with their own eyes. They don't have to see a post, right. because when you're just posting, you're just reaching for like, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's validation, me. yeah. And that's cool to a certain extent, depending on how you approach it. But really, actions is what's really going to make everything change in this world right now. Um, and for the best, and it really needs that um, on multiples of levels, but we can only find that when we all do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I mean. It's like this, uh, and I, I admit I'm guilty of it because I see this, you know, someone I know who's an actor posting, oh, just had a meeting, and then I'm like, well, now I got to post that I just did a self tape to show <laughs> that I'm doing the same amount, and it's just, it's, and then, but yeah. then I, I check it, and I'm like, why? Like who's really, no one's going to see it. They're just going to click through my story. So it's, I think mindfulness is something we've kind of, I was never really taught with those kind of thoughts. And um, I do feel uh, that we've created this world where if you have to work, 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 and you can't take a break. And I don't think that's fair because people deserve breaks and they right. deserve to play GTA and uh, <laughs> sit down. What you can do next time they say they just had a meeting and they just did this, this, and that. Say, oh, that's awesome. Who was it with? And then when they tell you, be like, sweet, I'm going to call them now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You'd be like, oh, yeah, that's awesome on my resume too. Thank you. Oh, call them too and do the same thing. Thanks. Exactly. <laughs> You'll be like, oh. Because exactly. yeah, don't overshare. <laughs> that, yeah, that's actually going into something and then and then you know we'll go into the final thing. But that is like a huge pet peeve of mine. When first off, you know, when people are like, My friend, she just got this, why didn't I get it? That's one mm -hmm. thing I can't stand because it's like nobody's the same, right? So right. and your different credits and different things going on. So that's one one issue. But then also it's like um just that competition thing and, and like such and such has got this and why am I not getting that and like you get in your head and it's mm -hmm. awful and it tears you down when you could be more productive and not really focus on that negative stuff and focus right. on yourself and build something up from there and dominate in another area that uh, your friend might not be getting into you know because right. why would you want to follow the footsteps of everybody going to the same thing over and over again, you're all getting the same thing. Why would you want that? 
I would want something where I'm getting the stuff nobody else is getting and I'm getting in that back door into stuff that's bigger and better while they mm-hmm. all follow each other in a line going the same the- path right yeah. that's so that's so important yeah that's I yeah. needed to hear that <laughs> that's great so that's a good way of looking at it yeah definitely and it goes back to social media like I'm I've been guilty of this where I'll be seeing friends put up a huge opportunity and it's like you're happy for them but then it, you'd be like damn when mm-hmm. is it my turn like yeah, this, yeah. This is annoying so like you have to be very aware of that you gotta be laser focused on yourself and what you're doing and not really get affected by the people around you or, or that competition and that whole thought process even like i shoot as well i'm a photographer and so there's so many photographers and they all have competition they all like posting stuff constantly when i let myself go into that hole of like oh man i just posted it now this person's posting it and that whole competent like competition kind of hole will tear you down and it makes me realize like what you guys go through as actors how going to a waiting room with 50 other actors going for the same role and everyone's sitting in there sweating and stressing out and and you get that competition thing going on in, in the back of your head and you got to go in there and read and now you're super in your head is i think the people that actually just go in and knock these things out don't get in their head and think about the next one rather than the one they're doing those are the people yep. i see book most yeah and yeah. i'm lucky that my um at the actor studio they train it's method acting but it's the basis of it is relaxation and so it's to be able, I just simply to put on blinders, which I luckily am getting, I, I'm cultivating that kind of focus because I need to, because you're right. I've gone to rooms with a bunch of other girls who look kind of really cl- like a lot like me. And that in itself is so strange when you think you're so unique and then you're walking and you're like, oh, well, you got long hair like mine. Okay. But uh, it's, it's being able to like put on those blinders and just go inward. You right. go inward in the, you, I think you go inward in the waiting room outward here's me okay what am i reading for geico great and then you do it in the in the audition room they so talk to you of... a method actor also no so i was like to say this guy's so mellow he must be a method actor he must be yeah you you kind of you're already you're already kind of there you're just very chill um i guess i don't know how it's how to describe my training like i studied theater in college but only did like two classes out of four years so it's been like the way i train i i said i don't know i just aren't there, like, talk, you're talk, so talk, good talk, you talk, didn't talk, need training <laughs> he's too good he didn't need training oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> but, that's yeah. what i'm getting nah, oh. We got some awesome stuff from you. So, so, all right. So fun questions. So what's your favorite food? If you, if you could only have one food till like, I don't know, the end of the year, what would that be? <laughs> I mean, it's so basic, but I literally could eat a large pizza for every meal for the rest of my life. I, I know it's basic. It's a basic answer, but yeah. <laughs> I like normally every other food I'm like, okay, I'm full pizza, never ending hole. I like, I think I could win competitions. Like I'm concerned because I just like, my boyfriend will stop after a couple slices and I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like I would eat pizza for the rest of my life. Good pizza. Actually, it's not a bad idea. I mean, not a bad, I mean, it's not bad because if you think about it, you can, it's one pizza, but you can do pizza with like, you can vary, you know, there's so many variety of pizza. Whereas if it was macaroni and cheese, you can only do so much. With a macaroni and cheese, right? Pizza. I put my veggies on there. I'm all set. <laughs> all thinking all ahead. She cheese pizza with veggies. Uh, if I was eating it for a year, yeah, I would. <laughs> I'd put some, <laughs> put a little one green pepper on there. Jeez, don't come for me. <laughs> some pineapples on that joint. <laughs> what I, else you got, Tosh? People look at me crazy when I mention pineapples on a pizza. I'm, I'm like. Yo, it's it's healthy. It's it gives me sweet tang to it. It's good. I, I had that the other night. I was like, you're reading my mind a little bit. Pineapple's great. Yeah. We've just made a bold political statement, by the way, saying pineapple's good on pizza. It's because it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been seeing that. Like, what's the deal with that? Every I think pineapple's awesome. 
I love it. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Groundbreaking. <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> I've seen it popping up here and there. Subliminally. So now it's out there. It's done. Yeah. We got three-way anonymous vote on pineapple on pizza. Yeah. There you go. What else you got, Tosh? You got any other funny, crazy questions to, to run this out? Lazy questions. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So this is just my one and only question. If somebody was thinking, yes, just one, just one. Okay. All right. If somebody was to run up to you, right, and they are thinking about becoming an actor, what would you tell them? I would say, ooh, girl. Um, okay, running up to me said, I want to be an actor. I would tell them to not focus on all the noise, to work hard, to realize that, like I said earlier, it's a long game. If you play it for the short game, you're not going to go very far. Um, and I would say, Find teachers. Find teachers you like. Find peers you like. Go to go to go to classes with the teachers that you like. Don't sit in classes that are not benefiting you, and not in a way that you're getting criticism and you don't like criticism. I mean, find really good teachers because the reason I'm where I am is I had a, I had a great teacher, and then I had a I had a, another great teacher, and then I learned that, and I was like, oh okay, because I think acting is so communal that you need teachers and you need peers and you need to go to class because you pick up things like I've said during this I said oh I had a teacher tell me this you pick up things and then you kind of build your own method and you build your own network so I would just encourage finding and sourcing people in a community because um we want to share I want to share my knowledge if someone came up to me I'd be like oh do you need help with a monologue like that's what acting is I think it's a passing down of this art form so I would say find good teachers um find people who will support you and uh, you know, don't pay to play too much, but um, just just you know, find a method that works for you. Find people who support you, and find a good group. There you go. That's what so, it is. That's Ooh, simple. That's, that's <laughs> the last gem that he always gets at the end. Thank you. Mic drop. <laughs> Mic drop. Thank you. Awesome. Was well, is, it, is it awesome meeting you? By the way. You too. And, this um, is so fun. Yeah, great seeing you again, Lucy. Definitely love to talk to you about that other stuff we talked about before that we're not disclosing officially. Yeah. The trade the trademarked new idea. Yes. And um and yeah, and then send us the info for your sites. We'll put it in this. And yeah, that's it. That's it pretty much. Didn't want to Ooh. drag it on too long. Today is awesome. I don't know about where you guys are at, but I'm sure it's pretty hot and pretty nice over there too. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's it's, it's sunny and windy. <laughs> <laughs> it is yes, there is weather happening. Um, pretty warm, so Ooh. time for some air conditioning. <laughs> right, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'll be in touch. I can't wait right. to be a gamer. <laughs> hey, Lizzie. Yeah.